All right, let's start with some breaking inputs which are just coming in from Pakistan where massive protests have reportedly erupted against the Pakistani state in the Gilgit-Baltistan area. Protesters are furious over the imposition of new tax, calling it as immoral and illegal on the part of the Pakistani government. Now, the people of Gilgit-Baltistan have strengthened their voice against Pakistan's immoral imposition of taxes on them. Shutters have been downed. The strikers and massive protests by traders and local residents are continuing in Gilgit, Baltistan, as they've accused Pakistan for misusing power. Now, the lawyers say that the imposition of any tax in Gilgit, Baltistan is illegal and immoral act as people here do not have any representation in the National Assembly and Senate. So essentially, they are saying no taxation without representation until and unless the people of Gilgit and Baltistan have a say in what happens in their region and how their region is administered. Ideally, the Pakistani establishment should not tax them, but the Pakistani government is continuing to tax them, and this is what has set off this massive protest in the Gilgit-Baltistan area. So this is not the first time that the rest of Gilgit-Baltistan area has erupted in protests. There have been several issues in terms of how the Gilgit-Baltistan area has been administered and the Pakistani government wants to treat it as a normal, regular territory. But the fact of the matter is the people here have no representation in the National Assembly and Senate in Pakistan. And for more on this, we are joined in by our Islamabad Bureau Chief Taha Siddiqui. Taha, what exactly is happening here? Well, uh, basically, there are uh, the, the residents of Gilgit, Baltistan, uh, are uh, protesting against uh, an imposition of tax uh, on them, uh, and, and the reason they are saying is that because of the fact that Gilgit, Baltistan, uh, does not enjoy uh, the same constitutional rights as the rest of Pakistan, uh, such tax imposition should not happen until and unless uh, the constitutional rights are given to the province. Uh, as you know, Gilgit Baltistan right now is, is governed under special laws. Uh, it does not have its own, uh, you know, law-making assembly. Uh, recently, it was very recent, only a couple of years ago, when the first time an assembly, uh, a, a local provincial assembly, was formed there. But as of yet, the provincial assembly does not have any rights to legislate. So all all of that. So it's basically, uh, you know, the the there are many. Uh, rights issues, uh, constitutional rights issues, because of which every time something happens in Gilgit, Pakistan, from the Federation, from Islamabad, uh, the, the locals from there react and protest in this way. Right. And how, how does the Pakistani government intend to address an issue like this? It's essentially a question of, you know, being represented where the people have a real grievance here. They want themselves to have a say in terms of how their region is administered if they are paying taxes. So how has the Pakistani government been reacting to this? Well, uh, to, to start off with, uh, this is uh, the Gilgit Baltistan area is, is because of it's, it's in a remote place, so it does not get much media attention in Pakistan locally, and because of which the pressure does not build on the Pakistani government. Uh, but the Pakistani government has announced that it will uh, try to uh, give them, uh, you know, in the coming days there is a plan that Gilgit Baltistan will be given more rights and will, will perhaps uh, be given complete full constitutional autonomy uh, as like other provinces. Uh, so, so the government has announced that, but there is, a, there is no timeline to it and because of which there is, uh, you know, every now and then agitation in Gilgit Baltistan. Considering the fact, uh, you know, that this is not the first time that a protest has happened in the past, you know, the Gilgit-Baltistan area has been restive as well. Uh, how is, is this situation actually playing out there in terms of, you know, what the people actually want? Are they happy if they were to be given representation or, you know, is, is there more than the people are there, that are there in Gilgit-Baltistan demanding from the Pakistani establishment? Well, uh, to begin with, they want their constitutional rights. Uh, also, at the same time, uh, there, there, there is a bit of a sectarian issue in Gilead, Pakistan. So security 
obviously a big concern uh, because of the uh, the local dynamics there. Uh, there is a big uh, big majority of uh, Shia Muslims living in that area, particularly instead of Sunni Muslims, and the uh, some Sunni Muslims have resettled there, and there have been sectarian tensions, uh, which is also something that the Gilgit Baltistani population has been talking about and asking for. Uh, better protection and better law enforcement. Uh, at the same time, uh, you know, there, there is also uh, this, this. This is the province that, from where it's uh, it's bordering with China, mm -hmm. and because of which there's a lot of investment that is coming in from from the bordering areas, uh, but that is not being reinvested with the people. So the people feel in Great Pakistan, people feel neglected. And for that neglect, they want a better sort of involvement and commitment from the Federation. Right, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you very much indeed, Taha Siddiqui, for joining us and getting us all those updates. We'll, of course, keep coming back to you as the story unfolds in Gilgit, Baltistan.